Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Chatty Chit Chats with Chatty Mava on the last hour of Solar Power, except today it is a solar power today. Solo power. No solar power today. I'm not in the studio today. I am not also with my girl Priscilla. We both are having some conflicting scheduling as well as the radio station is kind of promoting new artists in Calgary. So I didn't want to interrupt those um, promotions and just kind of letting the, the city get to know more about the new artists and stuff with my topics. So I'll be back in the studio next week. Um, but in between, sometimes you guys will see, in between episodes, you guys will hear these kind of episodes where they are solo Chatty Mother episodes where I will be bringing these juicy topics alone. It's still going to be lit, you guys. You guys know that I get into it. But let's talk about it. This morning, first of all, it's 9.26 a.m., so I am running a little late with the episode. When it gets posted, though, you guys will see it at the usual time. You guys should be watching this on the playlist on my channel. So shouts out to you for listening. This episode will be a little bit longer than my typical episodes that are about 18 minutes. I think this one will run about maybe 25, 30 minutes max because we have a lot to talk about. I know you guys read the title, so you already know what the topic is about. We are going to get into talking about parenting. A lot of different things that have to do with parenting that don't get talked about enough. Um, so I'm going to start off by just prefacing this with saying that shout out to the moms, um, I'm a, I'm a mom myself. I am a mom. If you follow my channel, I'm a mom of three. You would know that I have twin boys that are four years old. They just turned four years old. Their names are Life and Ocean. And one of them, Ocean, is on the spectrum. He has autism. And so we've been kind of managing that. Um, he is special needs because mainly for the fact that he is nonverbal. So he doesn't actually speak uh, consistently. So I also have a 15-year-old. Well, she's about to be 15. Shouts out to my daughter, Jada. She's about to be 15 years old. So I am parenting two different spectrums of children. Um, I have the toddlers and then I also have a teenager. So we're going to talk about today some of the fears. We're going to talk about communication. We're going to talk about power dynamics between parents and children. Um, and just what kind of parents we're choosing to be and how that's affecting our children. Um, so first, let's get into starting from the nitty gritty. You find out that you're pregnant. You find out that you're pregnant. The minute that you find out you're pregnant, those fears are already creeping in. The first few fears are, well, first of all, well, damn, I'm pregnant. If you weren't trying for this baby, it's a fear already of, okay, now it's a question of, am I keeping the baby based off of your beliefs, your, you know, what you believe in and, and you know, all of that, um, that's a whole nother topic. But now that fear of, you know, what do I want to do with this pregnancy comes in. If you've been trying, there's still that fear of, oh my God, am I going to keep this baby? Am I going to miscarry? Um, the first three months, we already know that myth of, you know, don't tell anybody in the first three months because the first three months are so crucial. That's when, you know, if there's going to, if something will go wrong, that's usually when it will go wrong. And it's just... It's so scary. Like people don't really talk about the mental state that you're in or you go into once you find out you're pregnant. Once you know that you're literally in charge of and responsible for this being that's growing inside of you that you already love so much, you're so excited about, already planning for, or we're not prepared for and trying to figure things out. You're, there's still those fears that come in. Um, throughout the pregnancy, we also go through those fears of you know, around five months, you have to you get to find out the gender, but you also go through the testing for Down syndrome and all those different, you know, genetic issues that could possibly come up. And you, you know, for me, when I was pregnant with my twins, I was in my early thirties and already a huge overthinker. Um, and I thought that it would be easier for me. I thought, okay, I've already been through this with my daughter. I already kind of know what to expect. No, I was now thinking of, oh my God, one of my twins could be blind. One could come out with no leg. Constantly just stressed about things that I don't remember being as stressed about in my first pregnancy, which I think mostly has to do with age. Um, that's another dynamic that I think has to do with parenting or even just finding out you're pregnant. The way we handle things is so different depending on our, our age and level of maturity. When I was in my 20s, 
my I, I actually had my daughter um, Jada, who's about to be fifteen, when I was twenty years old. Found out I was pregnant when I was nineteen. Had her at twenty. Actually, I'm lying. I found out at eighteen and had her at nineteen. Yes. So that age, I was a lot younger. Didn't really know what to expect as much. Um, and I wasn't such an overthinker as I am now. Like through you, as you go through life, sometimes you become more anxious, more just because you see more of life. Um, also, at that time, there wasn't the social media age as deep. So I think in my pregnancy with my twins in my thirties, social media age was huge. So I was able to see more pregnancies that weren't going well, you know, along with obviously the beautiful stories. But we're talking today about more of the fears and the scary stuff and. It's not it's not to go I'm not going to go too deep to scare people off but it's just to talk about those real feelings that I think that every mother or parent um you go through them the fears after you or the fears also aside after the finding out about the genetics 5 months in then you go on to you know if they're fi- if you find out that everything is good with your pregnancy you go on to fears about either your body changes the weight gain you might gain for yourself um then the fact that you got to rip open that coochie to get that baby out or you got to have a c-section and be cut open there's only a couple ways this baby can get out um you also worry about you know what's going to happen in that delivery room you know a lot of mothers especially black mothers are are you know sadly passing away in their their deliveries because they're not being cared for properly you know we already have the issue with the medicals medical world with it where they don't hear us out a lot and that's probably a lot of people but for the black community and the minority communities they we go through it a lot more where we're just unheard they just don't want to hear what we're saying we see those stories all the time so that fear comes in as well when it's time to give birth then you have the baby then you're worrying about things like SIDS sudden infant death syndrome um, where your baby just doesn't wake up and just is just dies in their sleep you know, there's a lot of different worries that we go through. As your kids get older in the toddler stage now, you're worried about them choking on things. You're worried about things falling on their head. You're worried about them pulling things down onto them, them falling off of a bed. You're worried about them choking on just their simple toys that are supposed to be made for them. Because we see that as well. We see that toys that are made for kids just where they're getting recalled. You have to worry about the foods you're feeding them getting recalled and, you know, stuff like that. I literally just dropped my kids off to school not too long ago. And one of the fears I had was it just came in my mind out of nowhere was, is there going to be like a gun violence, you know, situation happening with my daughter in the school? Like those little fears just creep in. Are they in a, a safe environment? Things like that. As they get older, while they're in school, now you have to give your kids away to the responsibility of others. That is huge. And a lot of people think that moms are being dramatic when they're dropping their kids off for that first time or just, it's not, my daughter's 15. The first day I dropped her off to school, I was crying this year. Like I dropped her off and was on my way home in tears. Just, not even just for fear only. It's for the fact that I can't believe this is my daughter. I'm still in shock that she's my kid, that I have a 15 year old. It's 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 a lot of different feelings and emotions like it literally changes the way the wiring of your brain changes and you have this added stress and worry that's constant even when you see the signs that your child is okay you still worry and so those fears just never ever go away and you literally have them from the time your child is conceived until you are gone out of this world i'm going to get into another part of parenting and we're going to talk about communication a little bit just to kind of switch it up still still very heavy on the topic of parenting communication has to can probably you know be a part of a fear for some parents who just don't know how to communicate to their kids don't know when is the appropriate time to have certain conversations and some for some parents who just don't communicate with their kids open communication is really really big as a parent and for me personally i I'm striving to continue to be that parent where it's it's pure open communication. All doors are open in my house. Um and I mean that in a communi- in a in a way of for communication. Like literally any topic is open to us discussing it. My daughter can bring anything to me and we'll talk about it. 
there's nothing that she should feel uncomfortable speaking about unless that's just on her own, you know, her own choice. Um, my children are also very, very expressive. Um, even my four-year-olds, you know, they're still young, but they're really expressive and they express exactly how they feel to me. Um, life who is verbal and, you know, he's not on the spectrum. He's four years old as well. As I said, he's a twin. He is super expressive. He tells me when he's upset. He tells me I'm so sad. We talk about why he's sad. You know, the expressiveness is important and it kind of shows in your parenting when your kids are able to come and talk to you and without feeling, without being worried of being shut down or getting in big trouble or not being, trying to be understood. Um, for example, okay, a good example would be for a lot of Caribbean cultures, and I'm learning now in African cultures, a lot of the parenting styles are similar in the way that the power dynamic um, is huge. So for example, maybe your child wants to go outside and play today and a Jamaican parent, for example, my mom is Jamaican, would say, no, you're not going outside today. And I'm not saying my mom said this because my mom was a little bit more, communi she would communicate a little bit more than maybe I think the typical Jamaican parent because she was also raised in, in Canada. So she didn't have that hardcore Jamaican um, parenting style. Even though a lot of it was in there, it wasn't fully like that. So for a typical Jamaican, I feel like your kid would ask you to go outside and you'll say no. Your kid will say, but why? Or, you know, look upset or something. And you'll be like, I said no, go do what you're doing. Or, you know, close my door, get out of my room, whatever it is, just go back to doing whatever else. You're not going outside with no explanation. And I think that's the part I'm trying to get to. I'm taking 20 years to get to it, y'all. Sorry. I know I be chatty. Um, I think that um, explanate the explanation is huge. Explaining to your kids the whys, like that, will make it a better uh, relationship between you and your kid. And a lot of Caribbean and African parents, I feel that they they feel like they deserve respect, but they don't give the same respect to their kids, and they feel like because they're the adult, they are more superior, and they don't need. To, the kid doesn't need that type of respect. Um, they should just do as I say type of attitude. Um, and it causes conflict because your child walks away thinking, okay, my mom just doesn't want me to have fun. She just, you know, like, what did I do wrong? Um, why is she angry? She just doesn't want me to go. She And then a lot of, a lot of kids in their minds resort to like, I just, I just don't like my mom. Um, and the way to battle that is to explain. For me, I do a lot of explaining. My kids ask me why they can't do something. There's always a reason for my no's. I'm not just saying no for no reason. It's either we don't have the gas money. I don't have the money overall. Um, it's dangerous. Your safety is important. The things that you're not thinking of as a child asking certain questions. For example, maybe going outside was the weather is not good or I'm unable to come outside and you know, keep an eye on you, you know? So explaining is really important because also it will allow your kids to feel comfortable asking you why to get those responses and it will teach them to learn how to advocate for themselves. When they're in school, if somebody just tells them to do something, would you want them to just do it or would you want them to understand why they're doing it to better do it? Um, and I think that's so important because we also have to remember we're sending our kids out into the society where we are not going to be the only one dictating to them or asking them to do things, you know, and some of these things, we have a lot of unsavory people in this world and some of them we're handing our kids to without realizing it. So you need your kids to be able to advocate for themselves and it starts at home, you know, giving your kid that respect of letting them have their voice to ask you questions. It shouldn't be considered disrespectful for your child to ask you a question or to inquire more about what the hell you're asking them to do. You know, just like an adult, you want to know why you're doing these next steps or why you're at being asked to do this or that. If your kid wants to know why do I have to take out the garbage? Because it's we all live in this house and we're a community in this household as a family. And we all have to contribute to this household. And for now, that's your contribution. You know, like just explaining whatever it is that you're asking your child to do for them to understand better. Um, yeah, respect for respect, getting down to their level, trying to explain in a way that you know that they could try to understand. Um, 
because we all know our kids and we know the level of what they can understand and what how to explain things to them. And communication starts from so young. Like I said, I communicate with my four-year-olds. I've been communicating with them from the time that I knew they could understand. Um, and just talking to them regularly, not in baby talk. I've never done the baby talk thing. I want them to understand clearly. Um, I also do the the same thing myself in return. I explain to them how I'm feeling and why I'm feeling certain ways about whatever I'm feeling about. If I'm feeling moody that day, I will explain to them, mommy's not feeling great today. So if you see my face looking upset or anything, it's, it, you're not, you didn't do anything wrong. Mommy's just not feeling great today. Because you don't want to create anxiety in your children. You don't want to create worry in your children. You want your children to feel safe. Um, I think it's so important. And I also think another part to this communication is, it, depending on the child's ages. So communicating with a teenager is completely different from communicating with a toddler or a younger child. Um, or your adult child. Um, and I think with teenagers, it's the mo one of the more sensitive areas because you have to be careful how you communicate with them. They are, yeah, more sensitive. And they're trying to come into their own independency and their own thoughts and who they think they are. And it's important as parents to give them that chance to um, express and ex and clearly explain things in their way ask about things in their way, have that open dialogue with you. And yeah, when it comes to talking about those uncomfortable topics, better get into it. You want your kid to be able to talk to you about those things versus just learning and talking to their friends about things that, you know, they could be learning better from you, getting better advice and learning in a more mature way. Um, also not saying things like, if your kid comes to you and they're like telling you something that seems very teenage drama, you know, we may think, oh, we've been there, done that, you know, as a teenager. Um, you have to be careful. You can't say, oh, it's a teen thing. I went through the same thing. Everybody experiences that. And I think for everybody, that kind of goes the same. You should be able to listen to what somebody's telling you, how they're feeling um, and why they're feeling that way and not just simply generalize it. You can use examples. Oh, I've been through something like that too. And when I went through it, this is how I felt. But make sure that you're not ex ex you know, expecting them to have the same feelings or go through it the way you did. Because everybody experiences things very differently. And some people are unable to cope when it comes to um, things they're handling and feeling. I think finding out also how your kids are coping with things and asking them those questions when like how are you feeling how are you feeling about this or that if you guys have a big transition in your life happening for example maybe a new baby's coming you're moving maybe you're in a new relationship um as a parent it's important to talk to your your children about that as young as five six seven years old that's those are the ages you start talking about changes in life and just how they're feeling and getting to know how and telling them how you're feeling because that will help them learn how to express how they feel too because sometimes they don't have the words they don't know you know how to express um so yeah getting to know your kids is a huge part of communication because then you'll know how to communicate with your kids what things are more sensitive what things are more um open and how to open up doors that are you know kind of harder to open so that you can get to know your kid it's as small as do uh, you as a parent if you're listening to this do you know your kid's favorite color? Do you know their favorite subject? Are you involved in their schoolwork in any capacity? Um, things like that. Do you know any of their friends' names, what their friends' backgrounds are? You know, things like that. Do you ask those kind of questions? Like, are you showing interest in order and effort in order to really get to know your kids? Because a lot of parents have this feeling, and I've been through this myself, um, where... We just feel like we know our kids. We just we feel like we could speak for them. We could say what they would be feeling in this situation or that scenario. But when we if you were to sit down with your kid, you would be surprised to know a lot of the things that they already understand and know about, to know the way they would respond to something. Like a lot of times I would sit down and talk to my daughter and ask her, if a girl tried to fight with you and, and physically pushed you, like what would you do? I was surprised by a lot of her responses. Um, and I think it's really important to sit down and have that quality time where you're communicating and asking questions that are open-ended. Also asking questions like, 
Okay, for example, when I said that I wasn't always this parent that was, you know, questioning and asking and getting to know my daughter, especially once I had my twins, it's kind of like it I was it was hard for me to balance. Um so a lot of times I wasn't doing that quality time as much as I needed to in the beginning when I had my twins with my daughter. Um so I I became I started I, I became guilty and I started thinking of ways because, you know, the ages around from like 11 to teenage years are so important when it comes to self-esteem, confidence, being strong in who you are, having a voice, all of that. So I just was worried about, you know, her losing that through me focusing on my twin, her brothers. Um, so I came up with a game where every month we would have this questions time. Um, and it was once a month at first and it kind of became a little bit more as I had more time where we would just question, you know, questions. I would come up with three really good questions, three to four really good questions, just asking her about her life, things that had to do with her, trying to get to know her better, scenarios, and she loved it. Because who doesn't like talking about themselves? Um, and then I would also leave the door open to her asking it. I would ask her to ask me some questions as well. Um, and at first, you know, it was tough. She didn't know what to ask me. She didn't know. So I started giving her questions and that had to do with me. Like, for example, what do you think I could do better as a parent? Sometimes we're afraid as parents to ask those questions because we don't know what the response will be, you know? And I asked her, what does she think I could do better as a parent? And she didn't, you know, I've I've had to ask this question a few times since asking it the first time just to get a really good answer because, you know, a lot of times they're worried about hurting your feelings. They're worried that you're not really, really wanting to know the answer. So, you know, after a while, you get to know the real answers. And for her, it was she wanted more quality time with me. You know, we were just about to, um, we were just having these, sorry, we had just had these babies. She wasn't getting, you know, the time that she was used to. She was had been an only child for the first 10, 11 years of her life. And then the quality time had changed because now there was a focus on two new babies. So the quality time had to change and we upped that. And me hearing that made me know what she needed more of do you know your kids love language my daughter is a physical touch person when it comes to me she loves her hugs her good night hugs her good night kisses her good morning hugs and her good morning kisses it's starting to change a little bit more now because she's getting older but she was really that was her thing and i started making sure i was leaning more into that so focusing on love language is not only for relationships that are your personal love sexual relationships there are also have to do with your children and the way you love them sometimes the way you're loving your kid is not the way that they receive love so you need to think about what actions are they doing like my 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 twin boys are always physically kissing me one of them really loves affirmations and um getting praised so those are the things i do for them i try to do what they prefer as love because that's the way that they receive it so think about that as a parent. What are you doing? And how are, how do you think your child would want to receive that? So the last couple parts of this will be just talking about more, a little bit more about power, power dynamics, just to kind of end it off. I wanted to talk about that and say a lot of times, you know, with the power dynamics, um, we're looking at kids to behave the way we want them to behave as parents, to make it easier for us as parents Versus the way it should be as we want kids to behave appropriately and in a certain manner for themselves so that when they go out into society, they are be, they're, they're treated a certain way um, and, and they, they don't get into trouble and they could be the best person that they could be in this society. Um, so manipulative behaviors towards your kids you know, making them feel guilty for certain behaviors, not explaining your moods when it has nothing to do with them, uh, punishing them and carrying it on for days and silent treatments, um, things like that, you know, abusive behaviors, emotional abuse, all of these things, you need to be very careful and cautious of what you're doing because we need to remember the bigger picture. Later in life, the way that they their childhood and the way you're choosing to parent them later in life in their adulthood it's it's going to come out in all of their behaviors their relationships their friendships their business the way that they manage themselves and the way that they cope with issues 
it will all affect them. This parenting style that you're choosing will affect them later. Um, <laughs> your parenting will play one of the biggest roles, basically, in who they are, who they become, and who they even want to be as an adult. You want them to be able to present themselves to society in a certain way and to feel good about themselves. You want to raise confident children who are open and expressive about how they feel and about questions they have and about just who they are. So think about this as I let you go. If you're a parent, what kind of parent are you choosing to be? If you thought about asking them that question, what do you think they would say? And do you think their answer would be truthful? Do you think that they would be comfortable to be the truthful with you? If you're not a parent, what kind of parent would you want to be? I want to hear from you guys in the comments. I'm pretty sure there's so much more that could be added to the parenting topic. We can talk about it. So please make sure that you comment down below with anything you'd like to add to this. Don't be afraid. I love to hear from you guys. Um, and yeah, drop any topics that you guys want to hear more of from me down below. I'm going to let you guys go. If you were listening to this while you're driving, please drive safe. And for everyone, love and light to, to all of you. And until the next topic, bye.